All right, we can um, – well, no, but let's talk about what we expect to see in the scrimmage or what I think they – what Coach is going to emphasize, what Sark is going to be looking for in the scrimmage because there's still some competition happening at certain spots. And one of the spots that I am paying close attention to and, I, and I've heard from – players jaron thompson mentioned it uh his media availability sark said it recently at one of his media availabilities that the competition in the secondary is fierce there's some the comp, uh, big uh, that's a, a lot of competition there and i believe they're talking about that field corner spot because most of the other spots are pretty much locked up ryan watts is your boundary corner jaron thompson just throwing safety they got jalen catalan throwing the mix i'm sure he's gonna either be a star i mean i think he's gonna be a starter keaton crawford i think will be the safety they kind of bring in other than that i think jalen catalan will start off as a starter jade Barron is your nickel there's no doubt about that because he's fantastic and so the only question mark really is at field corner. So I think that's what they're talking about when they're talking about this ferocious competition happening in the secondary. They got Gavin Holmes that they like out there. Terrence Brooks, of course, one of those guys. I don't know what corner Malik Muhammad is playing right now, but they Sark did say and did remark that Terrence Brooks and some of his younger guys, uh, Malik Muhammad, they can play boundary and field. Uh, they can play both. And I think that's what I think that's what they want in the future. It, they don't want to have to pigeonhole a guy that he can only play on the field or the boundary side. The field side is the wide side. Boundary side is the short side of the field. Um, they don't want to pigeonhole guys that they can have to play in just that. Right now, Ryan Watts is that guy for you, and he, it's a perfect frame for it too because he's long and rangy, one of those Legion of Boom looking corners. Uh, but at the field side, I think that's where they're looking at the most competition in secondary. Gavin Holmes, Terrence Brooks. Um, hell, they've talked about guys like Austin Jordan and hell, I, it, Malik Muhammad had a fantastic scrimmage. Maybe he's lost two turnovers, had an interception and a forced fumble in the last scrimmage. So I think they want to see him ascend. So he might get pushed out there a little bit more. I assume Terrence Brooks is going to win that job. I've heard from Xavier Worthy that Xavier Worthy thinks he's the corner that gives him the most problems. So that means a lot to me that Xavier Worthy, NFL receiver, uh, has, you know, problems with Terrence Brooks out there. That is a glowing endorsement, if you will. And I've I've heard from other uh players and I'm sorry, even coaches, PK mentioned earlier this year that the most improved player throughout the spring was Terrence Brooks on yeah. defense. And he's uh you know, having seen him in person at that Alamo Bowl, you know, that whole team at Texas didn't play great in that Alamo Bowl against Washington. Uh, but Terrence Brooks did. Terrence Brooks played a really good he game, good. and he and that's a really veteran and good receiving core at Washington. By the way, it's why the Washington Huskies are number eleven in our countdown, and we will spotlight them coming up this morning. Ooh, Penix, uh, uh, Michael Penix Jr. and yeah. the crew from Washington. They will be our Horn Top Twenty countdown spotlight coming up in the nine o'clock hour. But Terrence Brooks didn't back down. I mean, he was a young guy, you know, after the getting the bowl practices and getting mm -hmm. ready for that, and uh, he was kind of thrown into that opportunity and took it. And I thought he acquitted himself pretty darn well. He's a bulldog, oh, yeah. Rod. Yeah, yes. He He's a talented bulldog, but he, he'll fight you. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I love his uh, I love his mentality out there. He is a guy that wants to make plays on the ball. Got great footwork, no wasted movement. Really got good. He's a guy I think he can really move around that secondary. I, I think he can play bounds. He probably could play nickel too. And honestly, probably could play safety if you need him. I think he's got that type of range of skill set as a player. So that is something to watch. I think this scrimmage, Sark says, this is a depth chart scrimmage. So that is a position they will decide, you know, in this scrimmage, I think largely who's going to end up being the frontline starter at that field corner. My my pick is probably going to be Terrence Brooks, but we'll see. There's some other guys well, that may be trending. And for folks who don't know, uh, Terrence's father, Chet, was an NFL player. He played for the Aggies. Yeah, played for the Aggies. Yeah, and he uh, played for the 49ers for three seasons mm -hmm. and then suffered a career-ending injury in 1990. And he's mentored Terrence his whole career. I mean, he's kind of taught him how to play the corner position at a very high level uh, from someone who played it at a professional level. Yep, and he's a, he's a footwork coach, like a DB yep. footwork specialist as well. I worked with him. Um, shout out to Anthony Williams. I worked with him at one of the camps uh, that uh, he organized, and he's really cool. He actually came up with the term wrecking crew. Really? Yeah, he's the one that came up with Jeff the Brooks term. Did. Yes, that's I mean, that's that's the story. That's awesome. <laughs> that's the story that he came up with the term, and he's a cool dude. And yeah, honestly, that's another reason why I'm proud of kind of pro Terrence Brooks. I know that he has been essentially <laughs> his he, coach. He, he's been well, oh, yeah, exactly. He, but he his skill set essentially has been built to be a DB. Like he has been, you know, basically developed as a DB even from his youth as a player. 
Yeah. So he Always understands the position. Right. Yeah. He understands all the nuances of the position. Yeah. Because of dad. And nuances are, are you know one thing to be have all the athletic ability, but the nuances of what separates. And now his own dad, Chet, <laughs> compares him says he's like Jalen Ramsey. And Minka Fitzpatrick combined. Now that's a dad, right? Now that's a bad dad. <laughs> <laughs> but what I think he's trying to get at, yeah, I wouldn't go that far. But he is a dad. What I, I think he's trying, and I just brought it up. He has a very wide ranging skill set as a defensive back. Yeah. Um. I think you, I think you could move him around that secondary if need be. So uh, that's one to watch. Also, the linebacker spot opposite Jalen Ford. We still don't know. Um, there's been talk to David Benda. It's like he looks great, and that he has, as a veteran player now, and he's been here. Man, is he a fifth year? Fifth senior? year player. From fifth Katie. year senior. Yep. Um, man, you still, you know those guys <laughs> don't stick around usually here at Texas, waiting to play their senior year. And David Benda did, and all the reports are that he looks great, and he's going to be a stabilizing force there. Regardless of what happens with Anthony Hill, whether he is at that spot or whether they put him on the edge a little bit situationally, Anthony, there's no denying Anthony Hill will see the field sooner rather than later. Hey, yeah. no, you can't. If now, if they, David Bender and how well he plays will determine. I think if they use uh, Anthony Hill more situationally, or if they have to rely on him actually as the off-ball linebacker opposite Jalen Ford, if they can depend on David Bender, or who knows, Mo, Mo Blackwell, I'm not, there's other guys who may be in that competition too, but if they find someone they deem as a reliable starter, I don't think they'll force Anthony Hill in that spot early on. I think they'll use him situationally. If they don't trust any of those guys, David Bender, or if Anthony Hill is on their level or close to it, you always go with the younger guy. Go with the prodigy in that case, and if David Bender doesn't, prove himself as a frontline starter, I think they'll just go with Anthony Hill potentially there. A lot of that will be determined in the scrimmage too.